Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel, Art Classes My Way. Today we are going to be working on uh, chains and let me know if there are different kinds of chains that you would like to learn about. Uh, currently I'm just working with uh, jump rings and I do plan to branch off in other kinds of chains other than just working with chain mail and jump ring type situation. But this is how we get it started. And I'm going to pretty much go on the assumption that you guys are pretty intelligent here. Uh, you can basically see we have larger jump rings. These guys are all... Thank you, Brody. Dog's drinking. I'll try to talk over him. But these larger jump rings, these are all 6.5 millimeters big. And then we have these little guys here that are all... 4.5 millimeters and they are both 18 gauge wire that it, we have here and I am just going through taking the larger jump ring and just a recap of another video that I have out there the proper way to open and close a jump ring you grab a hold of your jump ring by the side take another set of pliers and rotate so that way they're open like that uh, there's a more in-depth video that I have on um, properly opening and closing a jump ring. I recommend you go and check that out if you have no idea what I'm talking about. But I'm just going to go ahead and assume that we do. So you're going to thread that first jump ring through two of the smaller ones. Once we have done that, put two more smaller ones on there. <sighs> Everybody will be cursed with the case of the dropsies while they're doing this, so try to keep track of all your jump rings and doing this over a table best you can. Because you are going to lose a lot of them, especially if you're dealing with smaller jump rings like I currently am. Threading through, and I'm sorry if I'm going off camera, by the way. Slide on two more. And it is better to open up this larger jump ring than the two smaller ones, one. So that way you end up with less tool marks overall on all of your metal than you would by opening and closing the smaller ones. And also it is easier to close one jump ring and making sure that it is nice and even as opposed to doing these small ones and eventually getting really sick and tired of this project and not properly closing all your jump rings. That would be a travesty and that allows for so many things to go catastrophically wrong when people are just out and about regular wear. So we don't want that for our jewelry. Right. And as you can see this makes a pretty nice little chain here can be used for a necklace. If you have that much patience, this is going to end up being a bracelet by the time I'm done because I do not have that much patience. And this also makes for a wonderful charm bracelet to add charms to. So I'm going to end that on a large piece here. All right. measure it against my wrist. I want this to go pretty far around, but I don't want it to completely touch, which that is looking pretty good. That leaves me plenty of room to do something a little different, going with a smaller chain to connect around the back, which is going to be this guy, which is all made out of the 4.5, exact same thing, one two, one, two, one, two. Uh, I'm going to want a little bit more length to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put away all of these 6.5s, except for one. I always leave one out for the end. I like having a slightly larger jump ring uh, to be able to hook with makes life a lot easier and if you have older customers that have a little bit harder time 
messing with little clasps and things like that. It just makes everything so much worse when they're trying to thread a clasp or even if you use lobster claws through a teeny tiny jump ring. It may look better overall on your piece, but it just makes life difficult for so many people. So, all right. More of these little guys out here. second ago, a tangle from happening again. Close carefully. Hopefully nothing goes flying into the air. And there we have it. Alright. Now we've got a much shorter little chain going on there. Now we're just going to open up this guy. Thread him through. All right. And then I'll put my clasp on the end here so that way you got a nice little front and back look to it. Now, Now we got that going. Now we just need to make the clasp. And I just got a piece of scrap here. This is probably a uh, 20 gauge wire, odds are. And make a nice little clasp, but I don't want it to be something that's going to outshine what we got here. So yeah, let's just do a little S clasp. So all around we go. And leave a good enough size little hook there for it to be able to latch on, but I want it to feel close so that way it doesn't accidentally like unhook itself. Bench block.
this on the smaller end. Just going in here, making sure that he closes the way I want him to. There we go. There. And make sure that this is a little bit sharper. There. on earth can put bracelets on themselves. I have yet to truly figure it out. Yeah, Mom. You were 90% there. There we go. And it's got a nice little clink when it slides onto that. So I feel nice and safe to wear it. Plus, since it's down here so long, this thing has to basically turn itself upside down. As you can see, that hole is smaller than the jump ring that we have there. So there is some effort and pulling that's going to have to happen in order to break that. And it's got a nice enough, you know, nice, a little bit looser. It's not a super tight chain or anything. And there you have it. A lovely little chain. You could add all kinds of different dangles and bangles and what doohickeys and thingamabobs and all kinds of charms and stuff and then you don't have to be confined to the super simple bracelets or necklaces if you have the patience for the necklace uh, then by all means make a necklace but something a little bit different to add your charms to if that's what you're into and there are all kinds of chainmail designs out there so let me know if chainmail is something you guys are interested in uh, learning some more patterns to. I'm more than happy to do that. But probably just do it on a smaller scale. Who knows, I might even do it on a larger scale. I still gotta figure out an open class project uh, for this summer anyway, fair time. So we have that and there are, there's another type of chain which um, chain making the individual links and such uh, that qu aren't quite dealing with the jump rings. So please let me know what you guys are interested in and if you want to wait to let me know after you see the next uh, three videos on making your own chain, please let me know down in the comments section. That is what it is there for. Please like, comment, favorite, and subscribe and ring that little bell doohickey. I don't know. Everybody's saying that now. <laughs> um, and I hope you all have a wonderful day and thanks for coming and hanging out. Bye!